Hey everyone, welcome to Love and Life's Journey. I'm Chantel. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you're new to my channel and you like DIY projects, Dollar Tree DIYs, DIYs on a budget, then hopefully you will like what you see on my channel. So be sure to subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell so that you'll be notified when I upload new videos. Today's project is one that I'm really excited to bring to you because it solves a problem that I have had in my kitchen and that is the problem of K-cup storage for our Keurig machine. So let me show you the way we have been doing it. Yep, we just put the boxes of K-cups back behind the Keurig machine and it's not very attractive. So I know there are a lot of K-cup storage shelves, caddies, boxes, baskets, whatever on the market, but I wanted something that was really slim and that would fit right up against the wall. And those are kind of hard to find and the ones that I did find are a little spendy. So uh, I decided to come up with my own and I really like how this turned out and it only cost $5 using supplies from Dollar Tree. So let's not wait any longer. Let's jump into it and I'll show you how I made it. To make this K-cup holder, I will be using four of these little thankful signs from Dollar Tree. They are hollow and have a picture hanger in the back. They also have this style instead of the black and white buffalo check, it's more of a plaid on the sides. And then I'll also be using one package of the wooden rulers from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to be using some black craft paint and a foam brush. And this is just apple barrel uh, black paint from Walmart. And I'll be using my hot glue gun and I'm using Gorilla Glue Sticks in this. And I would recommend using Gorilla Glue Sticks or even using some E6000 if you're not going to use the Gorilla Glue. So first I'm going to take the plastic off of the signs and then I'm going to gently pull off the picture hanger that is on the back of them. And I will just repeat this for all four signs. Then I will take the two rulers and the colored strips that have the measurements on them are just stuck on so they will peel right off and uh, there will be a little bit of sticky uh, left on the ruler so I just take a little bit of sandpaper and rub over the top of that and that takes it right off. Next I'm going to take my black craft paint and I will paint the side of the rulers that I removed the measurements from. There is a little bit of a raised part in the center of this side and so I'm going to be painting that side and then also the edges. But for now, I'm going to leave the back side unpainted. Next, I'm going to take the signs and on the back side, I'm going to just use my foam brush and take some paint. I'm going to paint the edges all the way around the sign and then I'm going to paint the insides of the signs as well. And I will do this for all four signs. I did end up using a smaller paintbrush to get down inside of the corners and fill in some of the places on the ends. Another way you could do the edges is just to take a black Sharpie marker and color along those edges. If you have a nice new Sharpie marker, it works best. Now I'm going to take the flat unpainted side of the ruler and I'm going to 
just hold it up onto the side of the sign and mark the ends. And I'll do this on all four ends of the two rulers. Now I took a long time trying to lay this out and get it spaced just right uh, because the two uh, signs in the center I'm going to actually tilt and so it was a little bit tricky. So I'm just going to give you the measurements of how to mark your ruler and then you'll know where to place these. So each end of the ruler is going to be one and a quarter inches. Then you're going to have to mark that's four inches and three and a half inches, two inches, and then again, one and a quarter. And I know that doesn't really make any sense, but it, it all comes out in the end, just trust me. There is a method to my madness. So I don't know what happened to the video of me actually gluing these, but I glued the signs on the top and the bottom of the ruler, basically. And uh, I put my ruler so that the hole in the ruler is facing up. And then I will glue the other ruler on the other side so that I basically have a box. And you want to make sure that the open sides of your signs are facing up. So now I'm going to glue in the two middle signs and this is where those measurements come in. And so at the two inch mark, I am going to put the bottom of another sign and put that corner of the sign right on that mark. Now I don't want to put these just flat straight across. Um, I want to tilt them. So I'm going to keep that bottom corner of the sign on that two inch mark and then I'm going to tilt the sign until the opposite top corner is right on the edge the other edge of the ruler, um, just as you see here. And then I will just use some Gorilla Hot Glue to attach this to the ruler. Then I'm going to add the fourth sign. I'm going to put that bottom corner of this sign on that mark where we marked the four inches. And then I'll basically put this on the same way. That bottom corner is going to go on that four inch mark. And then I'm going to tilt the sign and line up that other top corner on the edge of the ruler. And then I'll glue it down with some Gorilla Glue as well. Then I'm going to flip it over and glue the other edges of those two center signs. And I'm just using my ruler to make sure I get the, the one at two inches and then the top one will be at four inches. Now I just need to paint the insides of those rulers where I had my measurements uh, on the inside. I didn't want to paint them beforehand because then I would not be able to see my measurements well and also I wanted the glue to adhere really well so I thought that'd be best to wait and paint it after I glued them. I did try to use the foam brush for this but it was just too big and I ended up switching to a smaller brush.
The nice thing about this is if you get any black paint on that buffalo check, it's a smooth surface and you can just wipe it right off. It'll just rub off with your fingers or a damp cloth. For my last step, I did decide to go back over the outsides of the rulers and then touch up some of the inside of the boxes or those signs uh, just to give it a nice good coverage. And I did paint inside of the hole on the ruler uh, just to help disguise that a little bit. So here it is, and I love how it looks. The black and white buffalo check is real farmhouse looking, and it holds 24 K cups perfectly. And I love it right next to the Keurig machine, how it's just so compact and right up against the wall. It's perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. And it only costs $5 to make. You can't beat that. Well, I hope you enjoyed this project. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel to grow. Thank you so much for watching. So I just want to say thank you to all of you. I am overwhelmed and so grateful for you. Uh, this week I hit 20,000 subscribers and I, I am just blown away. And so, uh, I just want to thank you and I am planning to do a giveaway to celebrate that 20,000 subscriber mark and so um, that will probably happen next week so be sure that you are subscribed and hit that notification bell so that you uh, will see that video pop up with the giveaway in it and uh, again Thank you so much. I wouldn't be here without you, or maybe I would, but nobody would be watching. So um, I'm just grateful that I get to share my ideas with you and hopefully inspire you to try some of your own ideas. So uh, thank you so much for being part of the Love and Life's Journey community, and I love you guys. I don't know if you can hear my cat. She's meowing. Thank you, Ashley. Come here. Come here, ow. Here, say hi. Say hi to everybody. This is Ashley. Okay. Ouch. To you, it solves a problem that I've been trying to fix in my kitchen for a while, and that is, I got cat hair in my mouth.